Hey guys, it's Richard the Official Nado Channel uh, representing Reef of Palooza this today. Uh, We're here in Orlando, Florida, and I'm here with my friend Chad Clayton of Reef Nutrition. We also refer to him as a Copa guy. And now he has a great product for us. And what do you have for us today, Chad? So we have a lot of customers that are always requesting to grow their own live feeds to kind of do it yourself. And we've been working with aquaculture companies and small scale breeders for years now and what they use is this animal called the rotifer to feed to larval fish. So let's say you have a clownfish hatchery and you're hatching clownfish's larvae. The first thing you're going to feed them typically is the rotifer. It's one of the most popular live feed organisms in the world. And so what we've done is, is we've come up with a very simple system for people to culture rotifers uh, so that they not only can get their hands wet culturing a live feed organism, mm -hmm. but they can also offer a different source of nutrition for their corals and their fish. Yeah. Um, rotifers are very sized, uh, they're sized appropriately mm -hmm. for SPS corals and a lot of other, a lot of other larger filter feeding organisms. Gotcha. Um, and also fish will eat them as well. I know Antheus and Chromis that right, are right. planktivores yeah, right. will eat them as well. Very so nice. this was our answer to all the people that wanted to do it themselves. Yeah. And so this is what we came up with, the compact culture system. So how does this work? So it's very simple. It's an airlift system. Yeah. And so this is the T fitting filtration right. part of the part of the system. Yeah. And so what you do is you will put the T fitting into the bucket. You'll simply hook this up to a to an air pump and we have air pump recommendations on our yeah. website and also on our um, our little instruction manual that comes with the unit. Yeah. And so what happens is is that you have a diffuser at the at the bottom here so the air travels down the rigid air line the diffuser creates a, a bubbles the bubbles rise up through the column creates a vacuum pulls water through the floss and the floss traps waste so this is an a waste export mechanism it's very similar to a filter bag in a reef aquarium or people even use this kind of similar material to remove organic waste out of reef aquariums the right. biggest problem people have with culturing live feeds is waste buildup right. it's the same thing with any any system. The more you add to it, the more you need to take out. You're adding organics, they're eating it, they're creating waste. That waste has to go somewhere, it has to come out. Right. So this is the best way to export it. And so what, what happens is they pull this out, they rinse all the waste off, they pop it back in, and they do it again the next day. Rinse and repeat, so to speak. So this one, you don't, you don't, you don't have to replace all, you gotta just take it out, rinse it, and that's it? Right, yeah, you take it out, you rinse it, you can clean it with, um, it can, you can clean it with tap water. Yeah. The chlorine in tap water is insignificant. It'll be taken up very rapidly by the organics. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be spotless. You do not need to bleach it. You do not need to leave it um, out in the sun. It'll actually uh, eventually act as a, a biofilm, mm -hmm. um, especially if you clean it with RODI water and not tap water that's right, chlorinated. Right, right. You can protect the bacteria. Nice. But you don't really need the bacteria in the system because you'll be harvesting every day a certain percentage. Gotcha. And then, um, well, with the, with the rotifers, how do you feed them? So the rotifers, um, this is basically how we ship the rotifers. You would buy a rotifer culture from us. Yeah. This is a breathable bag. There's roughly a million in here. We culture these at our farm in California. We have roughly three billion on hand. Uh, we grow them in a biosecure facility, uh, so they are contamination free. So you would add the rotifers to the system, and then you would simply take a little bit of clean salt water, add the dose to that salt water, mix it, and then pour the dose of algae into the bucket. We always recommend that you do two or more feedings a day. That way you're not adding one big pulse of food, and so the food doesn't go to waste. It's, it's, it's uh, eaten more efficiently if you feed it small amounts multiple times daily. Most of our customers will just typically feed twice a day. Now, quick question, um, rotifers, like if you insert them into your tank, will they live there or would they die eventually? So this is something that I currently have some customers working on for me, doing some experimentation in, in a reef tank only, no fish. Yeah. And so there, there is a possibility for these animals to populate reef rock and refugium, absolutely. Their natural proclivity is to attach to surfaces. If you look at the anatomy of a rotifer, they actually have a foot. And so they prefer to attach to surfaces and filter feed off of phytoplankton plankton, bacteria, detritus, small particles that are drifting past them, and that's how they survive. And now, like, um, when you set up the salt water, like, what are the salinity that we should go for? Is there any specific temperature that we should look out for? Anything in specific that we, we should, you know, keep in mind when we set this? Absolutely. So, um, on our website and in the brochure, in the instruction manual that this comes with, we have a full breakdown of the specifications for the rotifers. Mm -hmm. um, we, spell, we sell two different kinds of rotifers, an L-type, which is Brachionis lichatilis, and we sell the S-type rotifer, Brachionis rotundiformis. 
the majority of people that buy rotifers from us buy the L-type rotifer. And so the L-type rotifer typically likes a temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So you people in South Florida, you don't need heaters. It's a perfect temp, 78, upper yep. 70s. It's a good temperature. Um, salinity can be very similar to your reef tank, or it can even be lower. You can run them at brackish water. Um, yeah, that's what salinity. I heard. Because uh, we even have customers culturing these rotifers, which most rotifers on the planet are either freshwater or brackish. So there are very few strict marine rotifers. Mm -hmm. So these animals can be used to feed to freshwater larval fish as well. So people working with zebra danio mm -hmm. uh, in research or in aquaculture yeah. can use our system, acclimate the rotifers down to a very low salinity, and then feed them to their larval fish. So. It's, it's pretty amazing the, the uses that you can get out of this. Not just feeding corals, but working yeah. with breeding fish. So once you get that bag of about a million, you said a million rotifers in that yeah, bag? Yeah, typically people buy a million, yeah. And then when they buy that bag, do you have to replenish every once in a while? Or like, will they re 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 repopulate in, in the bucket? Or so, that's the plan? Yeah, absolutely. So this, this is basically, if you do everything right, if you follow our protocols and you harvest daily and you feed properly, um, this can be a continuous culture. You are simply harvesting 20 to 30% every day, taking those rotifers out, separating them from the tank, from the culture water, uh, putting them into a clean container with clean salt water and then feeding them to your animals. And then you're putting in clean salt water back into the, into the rotifer culture system. So you are doing a water change and it's happening every day. We recommend you harvest rotifers every day so that the population doesn't get out of control and the rotifers remain young and vigorous. A young rotifer is reproducing herself rapidly. It's all, all asexual reproduction, so they're all females. They're all creating clones of themselves. And so when they're in, when they're in uh, high growth, fast reproduction mode, mm -hmm. um, 20 to 30 percent daily harvest is, is adequate, is appropriate. Gotcha. And how much does, the, does something like this cost? So with the bucket and the fitting, you're looking at $60, and it also comes with a lid. Uh, okay. The lid helps to prevent contamination. It also pre prevents a lot of evaporation. You know, you'll get, you'll get fresh water collecting on the lid, and you can just tap that back in before you remove the lid. Gotcha. So we also do sell the parts kit, because I'm sure a lot of you have five-gallon buckets. Who doesn't? Um, so this is $45, and so it includes all the parts, except it does not include, currently, it does not include the graduated sticker, which helps you measure your water level, helps you measure your harvest rate. And so we're going to include this in here and add instructions on how to how to attach it to your bucket. Very nice. Gotcha. And the rotifers, and you you guys, you, you, we could purchase from you as well, and it's always Fido, right? Yeah, so you can purchase the live rotifers directly from us. What we are doing right now is we are working on encouraging retail stores, local fish stores, to culture their own rotifers using our system mm -hmm. and use them on their own animals or sell them to their customers. So yeah. you can DIY, if you're a retail store, you can grow your own live feeds and use them however you want. You know, you can do this on the show floor, uh, on the display floor, and show people how you're culturing the rotifers, educate them, you know, because that's what we're all about is education in this industry. Right, right. Uh, and so it's a, it's a really good way to strike up a conversation about live feeds yeah. and how to use them, and not just for reef tanks, but these are used in aquaculture as well. Perfect. So, and, and as far as the algae goes, what we'd like to see eventually is retail stores carrying this algae. So this is RG Complete. This is a blend of, of different species of marine phytoplankton that we grow at our farm. Uh, this also contains an ammonia neutralizer and a pH buffering component. So it's, you've got water quality maintenance. Funny you mentioned that because I look at it, I was like sodium bicarbonate. I was like, is, is, there, is there a calcium in here? I was, that was original my thought. You know, yeah, like, it's yeah. funny that you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's all about maintaining stability, yeah. just like in a reef tank. Same thing applies here. You don't want dramatic swings in ammonia, low oxygen, right, uh, right. pH shifts. Those things yeah. are stressful to animals. For sure. So this is all in one. So basically, you've got water quality maintenance, you've got feed and enrichment. So these animals literally can come right out of this bucket and be fed directly to your animals without any secondary enrichment. None of that is required. Gotcha. And this is what a lot of our uh, marine ornamental breeders and freshwater breeders are working with right now. I know that, um, well, knowing your standards, I know this is not just one type of uh, phyto in here. How many, right. how many types of phytos in here? There are three species of phytoplankton in there, and there are some other added things that are proprietary of for obvious reasons, right, but right. it's and it's a highly concentrated blend, very similar to a lot of our other products, uh, oh, yeah, nutrition could, products. Oh yeah, you so. could definitely see by the color. 
And, and what's cool is this is this is more of a beginner level uh -huh. kind of feed for culture and rotifers. This, this is like the training wheels, right, so right. to speak. And so if somebody really ramped up production of, of rotifer culture, let's say you've got a retail store and you want to produce way more than this, we have industrial strength uh, uh, products that are triple concentrated. Uh, uh -huh. Rotogrow Plus is one of them. And so Rotogrow Plus is, is the same exact composition, same exact blend, but it's three times as concentrated. And that's what a lot of our aquaculture companies are using to culture and enrich rotifers and feed them to their animals. Very nice, very nice. All right, Chad, thank you so much for having me. I learned a great deal and I look forward to people picking this item up and then trying their own, growing on their rotifers. Me too. And if, you, if anybody ever has any questions, we have a tech support line. You can contact us through social media. Mm -hmm. We are more than willing to answer questions about live feeds or phytoplankton or all things aquatic. So awesome. it's great talking with you, Richard. Likewise. Cheers, have a great man. day, man. Yeah, great show. You said that you have an important announcement for your ticket pods. What is it? Yeah, we wanted to let all our retail stores know, distributors, all of our customers know that we now have added 50% more ticker pods per bottle. Copa Pod farming has never been better. We figured, why not do it? We're produ overproducing them anyway. So we thought we would pass that on to the consumer. There is one catch. We are increasing the price. Right. It's going to go up by $4. So minimum price will be uh, go from 21 to 25 So luckily, it's a very small increase in price with a large increase in biomass. That's awesome. And that's what we're, we're, that's what we're very good at. We're very good at, at a lot of biomass at, at a very affordable cost. And so for those of you that have mandarins and pipefish and all these animals that require live feed, now when you buy a bottle, you're going to get 50% more for, what is it, like 20-something percent more in the cost. Very so, awesome. It's good stuff. Copa Pod farming has never been better, and we're, we're glad to pass that on to the consumer. So. Awesome, Chad. Great so, work, yeah, man. Check us out. Yep.